Oh, Bluebeam! <laughs> <laughs> Playing with your cat and stimulating your cat is an essential part of taking care of your pet. Uh, people often underestimate and don't pay enough attention to it. And often you hear about the stories where a cat is aggressive or fighting with another cat or is waking you up at night. Most often, or it's not, it's not a cure for all, but very often it comes down to the stimulation or actually under stimulation. So in today's video, we're going to show you how to play with the cat and how not to play with the cat. So good and bad ways to play. Really often you also hear, my cat just doesn't like playing. Well, I like to disagree with that. So we're going to show you some techniques that we use to interact with your cat and to make them more engaged in the playing and just to get them to play. First of all, you need to find out what toys does your cat actually like. There are so many different ones that you can choose from. As you can see, we've got a selection of one toy, selection of smaller and bigger ones as well. Uh, what is great about playing with your cat it is actually that it builds up a bond between you and your pet as well. That's why one toys are great for it. But cats also like to entertain it themselves. So don't forget about having little small balls or mice like these ones, smaller, bigger, again, depending on the cat. Sometimes you might just let your cat choose the toy of the day. <laughs> so Blue is just choosing out of the box. We'll see what he comes up with. Um, I am guessing it is going to be one of the ones toys. Yeah, <laughs> of course it's a wand. <laughs> Of course he chose this one, this is actually his favourite and this is a stick one so it's not really like that movable as opposed to one of these toys but we'll show you playing with both. Uh, this one we found um, that is really good at like guiding where the toy goes um, and because it is a little bit shorter you can move it a bit quicker <laughs> and as you can see <laughs> he loves it so much. We're going to start, start with Blue Bell's favourite, the wand toy and we're going to start with the bad way of playing with it. So what we see people do sometimes is just literally going like this with the toy and just being like, no, my cat is lazy, look. They just don't move. Blue Boy is hyper, so. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is not working. This is because this is not a movement that something in the wild would do. So if you imagine a mouse, for example, trying to run away, it would run by the walls or between something just to hide a little bit better. So that's the movement you want to replicate because for cats, that will awaken their instincts. <laughs> it certainly works for Bloody. He's instantly interested. <laughs> what a difference it makes. So now the good technique. So we're going slowly. And sort of like a snake movement. And you can see he's very interested and getting ready to attack. And I'm just going like, <laughs> so I'm going around my knee and around the corners and that's <laughs> making him go crazy. <laughs> also, it's worth mentioning that even like uh, waiting for the prey and like just like um, observing. observing and spotting the right part what like when to attack it's also part of the play and like stimulation, stimulation. Yeah. so we're also using a blanket here so we've got different textures and the toy under the blanket so he's also getting really excited about that and it's hiding and coming out and hiding again <laughs> whoa hey <Blue. laughs> <laughs> Look at him go! Also, let your cat catch the toy sometimes so he can get some satisfaction from it. He is going for yeah. it. Uh, another thing we like to do sometimes, uh, because cats love uh, when the toy like goes behind objects. Exactly, yeah, you knew, mom. Uh, <laughs> so we like to put a pillow like right in the middle, so you can uh, like go with the toy behind the objects, so they lose the sight of it. That gets them really excited. Notice as soon as the toy will go behind a corner, he will most likely get. Yeah, there we go. He's lost the sight of the toy just for a second. And he just had to go and check it because he could, he couldn't stop himself. And again, we're going to do the same. 
as soon, yeah, as soon as he knows that he's going to lose the sight of it, he just goes for it. <laughs> so if your kitty is not that interested in playing or not that engaged, uh, we would definitely suggest putting like a like an object that would be um, getting in the way of the toy. So like to block the the sight of the of the toy. That really gets them going. <laughs> you can also try it um, on like the corners around uh, the door or around the furniture as well if you're playing on the floor. If you also want to get your cat um, interested in a toy, you can make some noise with it. So maybe go on the side of the furniture or like bedding. Just rub on it so it works on like all of the senses. And as you can see, yeah, Bloop is interesting. Pixie definitely wants to know what's happening. <laughs> Hello. So sounding is another way to stimulate your cars or get, get them engaged in playing. So for example, if I want to get Pixie up on the bed and I go like this, Pixie. Pixie. She just won't do it. And you might be like, oh, my cat doesn't want to play. But if you go slowly and behind things, <laughs> <You know. laughs> Instant results. Straight away. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so a big mistake that a lot of cat owners make is playing with your hands. So I know it can be so cute playing with a little kitten and when they start to um, hold onto your hand and bite a little bit, like play bite. Um, but as cute as it is, it does actually create some very bad habits for the future. As they grow, their teeth are getting sharper, their claws are getting bigger and you do not want to have scratches all over your hands at all times. <laughs> So that's something that we definitely started to do with our kittens from the get-go. As soon as they would start to bite or claw on our hand while petted, we would just take our hand away and just leave it and that was the end of the playtime. So always make sure to use toys. So she is playing with the toy and as soon as I take the toy away... <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be like this. Come here, come back. And let's see how interested will she be in the hand. So she is observing it, but she's not attacking it. So even under the blanket, she's observing and make a noise, but she's not attacking. And as soon as we use the toy, <laughs> the paws are going all over the place. Paw, 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 paw. <laughs> yeah. Instantly, she's changing the behavior. She knows so she not knows to play with hands. This is playtime. Oh, you look a bit tired. Because we've actually recorded the clip previously, but Matt forgot to turn the microphone on. So Whoopsie. Pixie's a little bit tired out from all this playing. But the point is that they just know that hands are there to pet them and not to bite and scratch them while playing. <laughs> Blubber was happy to play with anything today. <laughs> He's in a very playful mood. This is actually Pixie's toy and she loves this one. Um, so that's again something that you need to find out for your cat. So this makes a little bit of noise, it's like crinkling noise and she likes it. But if something makes too loud of a noise, so it's got like bells or squeaks, um, it's a bit too much for Pixie and she doesn't really want to play with it. Blueball doesn't mind, you can use everything to play with him. The louder the better, the bigger the better. So it will depend on your cards. Yeah. Pixie just loves like tiny things. Yeah. So I think she's got a couple like really small mouses here. Let's see. Oh, she's got this one. Well, this one's actually eaten by Blueball. <laughs> no, <laughs> those ears that are like so chewed, he chewed through them. Uh, Pixie likes this little pretzel because it's small and she can just bite it and carry it sometimes. Or, I don't know, for example, oh, she loves to play with those little ping pong balls. Super inexpensive, but so much fun. They just fly around the house. <laughs> <laughs> so with this one, uh, it is a little bit longer, so it's got a little bit of elastic here. And with these toys, again, it is even easier to like replicate the movement and go around and make this like snaky move.
<laughs> I think Pixie was a little bit interested. She wanted to see what's happening. <laughs> Toys like these or even longer ones are great because you have like a longer reach, um, but you don't get as much agility yeah. with them. So um, as soon as your cat catches it, you don't really have a way of running away from it. So it just depends on the style and probably your cat's mood for the day really, and what they prefer, and what you prefer and what you find more engaging with your cat. It's also the place where we play. So you probably notice that we're obviously on the bed yeah. and this is the best place for our cats to play. So for some reason, that's uh, that's where they like to play. They even prefer it to a cat tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sometimes we play on the scratching post. So go with a one toy on the scratching post and then they climb up on it as well, which let's show you now. This is one of the toys that we made in our previous vlog video. Um, it is very much inspired by a toy that we saw in Pets at Home. Uh, but we just decided it was quite expensive for what it was and made it ourselves. So we'll link it down below if you want to make your own one. Maybe. Or maybe this is what doing. Ah, Blubby's first. <laughs> oh, Pixie's here. Oh, and Blubby's here. <laughs> we have a little party going on. And back to the old favourite toy. <laughs> Ah, uh, Blueby instantly goes on the post, put it in the tunnel and then pull it away. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so now we're going to move to a great technique of playing with your kitten when they're hiding. So especially if you just brought a kitten home and maybe it's a little bit scared, doesn't want to come out of under the bed or is sitting in the box, you can play with it that way. So we're going to take a different blanket. I was just so interested in Conveniently, that Conveniently, we have one here. <laughs> and this is quite thin, so um, it can be a little bit see through. You can like, see the motion through it. And again, very conveniently, we have another cat under the bed. So hopefully this one will cooperate. And that's got those little tassels at the bottom as well so that should add even more fun to it <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna get pixie interested in coming for the toy oh there we go she's she's already closer so just moving around a little bit and now i'm going to go upwards very slowly in this motion there, there we, we go, go. <laughs> So that way, when mom's going on this side of the blanket, the cat that's under the bed still feels really safe because she feels like she's still hidden in like a cave or something. Uh, but she obviously sees... Oh, Blueby! <laughs> <laughs> He's just going crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing you can try, as you can see, Mon is going from side to side. So literally just the um, very small part of the toy is on the other side of the blanket. And Pixie obviously sees that. So she's getting very excited. But again, she has the opportunity to stay behind the blanket. So she feels like she's still hidden. <laughs> and as you can see, it's working very well. <laughs> Just a second ago, she was very sleepy, but her instincts got better <laughs> of her. And she just has to hunt it. <laughs> When your kitty is hiding under the bed and is scared to come out, definitely don't force it to come out. Um, just let it come out on its own or through play. Uh, but that's definitely a good idea to play with it a little bit, but still keep it in its safe place. <laughs> Go get it, Blooby. It's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so surprised. So I think we mentioned about like having small toys around the house so cats can entertain themselves as well. I think this is a very good example of how Bluebell is more than capable to play by himself. By right, Blueby? You love a good ball. We'll throw it to Meow Me. Huh? Where'd it go? <laughs> He's tired after all the playing, much like Pixie. <laughs> anyway, they probably back to love that long play <laughs> session today. So what we get asked a lot is what to do when your cat is keeping you up at night. 
and the answer is very simple. They have this cycle that they just go over and over and over <laughs> and it is hunt, catch, kill, eat, groom and sleep. So looking at the cycle, you want to be at the end of that cycle as you are going to the bed. So the sleep one. So what does it mean? You just want your cat to go to sleep when you are going to sleep. But that means you have to start at the beginning of the cycle, which is hand. And hunting at home would be playtime. So as long as you stimulate your cat just before your bedtime, make sure that they get enough playtime and then give them food. They will then complete the cycle, eat, groom themselves and then go to sleep. That way you will get the longest sleep that you can imagine having a little kitty. <laughs> Some other issues that people have sometimes include cats misbehaving, scratching on furniture, um, being a bit aggressive or attacking other cats, attacking humans when you pet them. And with being ab aggressive, very often it comes down to them accumulating this energy inside of them and being understimulated, so not having enough playtime. Making sure that you play with your cat often, daily, will probably solve many of these problems. We're not saying it will solve all of them because there could be some under underlying health issues that can cause that, but a lot of the time aggression comes down to not enough playtime. So to sum up, by playing you can eliminate some bad behaviours and bond with your kitty as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!